let's transition for a second about the salient differences between the light adjustable lens and, and now uh, the LAL Plus, which has launched within the last year uh, or so. Um, Dr. Vukic, I'll start with you on this one as well. And then, of course, uh, Dr. Bruns, you're doing a lot of the optics work postoperatively. Um, we'll transition to you. So uh, I'll be brief because, you know, Nick has so much experience with this. We were one of the clinical investigation sites uh, for this, uh, validating the technology and the outcomes. Uh, and uh, the results have been spectacular with the LAL+. Plus. We do have to be uh, cognizant of abnormal corneas, post-LASIK corneas, post-RK corneas, in which we use the standard uh, light adjustable lens. Uh, but you, re you lose like a letter or two at the most because of the uh, change in the optics on the LAL plus. So, but if you're talking about going from 2015 to 2015 minus, nobody notices. It, it, it's a non-issue. Uh, and so the LAL plus is really our go-to lens for anyone who has a standard cornea. Uh, and I'll, I'll defer to Nick because you, you've done so many of these and, and mm -hmm. you see these patients on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean, the, the big difference, the LAL Plus does have that central asphericity that's going to provide a little bit more depth of focus. And it really does provide a little bit. I mean, but when you're searching for, for perfection, a little bit goes a long way. And it does give you just a, a little bit of an enhanced uh, depth of focus. So most of our patients on average were between minus 0.75 and minus a diopter in the non-dominant eye. And that gets them J2 pretty comfortably. Uh, it really does. And it, the way the defocus curve is set, it also equates to 2025 20, plus distance vision in that minus 75 I. So it works in both directions. Um, I mean, the difference is that it, it just has a little bit extra, but if you look at the data, it does, I think you, you lose a line or a, not a line, a letter at distance with the LAL plus. Uh, and like, like John mentioned, 20, 2015 versus 2015 minus one, it's a non-factor uh, in, in most patients. Now, for our virgin corneas, healthy eyes, LAL plus all day. I, that's, that's what we do um, because these patients have every benefit without giving anything up. Patients that have aberrated corneas, post-LASIK patients, you really got to be careful. And, and we've used the LAL plus in post-LASIK LASIK patients before, and it, it, it has gone okay. But you are introducing a lens with very slightly more aberration to a system that's already aberrated. So you just have to be very careful. Um, and in those patients, I really hesitate to induce the added negative spher spherical aberration. So like I talked about previously with the ability to add that negative spherical aberration on the first treatment, use that ability and that power with extreme caution in your aberrated corneas, your post-LASIK corneas, your post-RK corneas. Definitely don't do it because you're just aberrating a system further that's already really aberrated. You're just introducing so much more optical noise. So be careful with that. Um, I don't think the LAL is going anywhere. You know, I think the LAL plus is fantastic and we will use it for all of our very healthy patients, but the LAL, the traditional LAL still has a place. And, and right now we're, we're pretty much 50, 50. I mean, we do a lot of patients who have aberrated corneas. We really push limits on how to use this technology. So more than half our patients are not perfect pristine corneas or perfect pristine maculas. And so for those patients, we'll take all of the advantage of the LAL and just give up a little bit of that reading ability, but we want to preserve the functional distance as much as we possibly can. So the LAL traditional uh, will be our, our go-to for those. You know, we have this entire generation for which the LASIK stopped working. Okay, I'll put that in quotes, but, you know, 25 years ago they had LASIK and now uh, they've got nucleosclerosis or they've had some change uh, in their refractive error and the, the LASIK wore off in their opinion. But, of course, we know what's happening with the lens. And, and they're actually the ones who understand the value, the the uh, personal value of not needing glasses, and they want to go back to not needing them. And they're way more motivated uh, just as a group. So, yeah, we, we see a lot of post-refractive patients now, um, and, and they're drawn to this technology. They do their homework, and they find out what we can offer. And so, yeah, as Nick said, about half of our patients are in that category. And, and quite frankly, we're very happy to have the standard light adjustable lens, uh, which is uh, just a go-to for those. Well, and it's such a nice category to have something for people who you already made happy in the past. 
uh, mm-hmm. to come back at another stage of their life for for uh, this and as part of cataract surgery, but also for a potential refractive lens exchange, even before cataract surgery is done. And um, Nick, you, I'm really glad that you said what you said because some practices ask, okay, so should you know? So how much longer are you going to use the um, the first LAL, the traditional LAL? Are you is that being phased out by your practice? And and it sounds like you've got a real use case for both, um, mm-hmm. which is exciting to hear. Yeah, and there's it's not one size fits all. It's not. And just like the lens and the, the adjustments are themselves, they're not one size fits all. You can't just categorize every patient. They have to look at it case by case. So look at the cornea. I mean, at the very least, look at the pentacam. Obviously, you're going to the topography. If you have an aberrometer, use it. Um, look and see where the aberrations are, what kind of aberrations they are. And, you know, there's no steadfast rule for how many aberrations uh, are too many. Um, we're kind of getting a feel for it. And so basically, if, if they're post-refractive, we, we pretty much stick to the LEL for now. Um, and we're, we're pretty 50-50, but both, it's great to have them both. So I, I would encourage Arcsite not to phase out the LEL because I think there's a spot for it. 